Hey guys, it's Gaz here with Arrow Studio. Today we're going to be kicking off a new phone gap tutorial series. In this series we're going to be making a simple stopwatch. Now we're going to be using Visual Studio and their tools for Cordova. Uh, once we're happy with the solution in Visual Studio, we're going to go and move it into more of a phone gap structure. We're going to zip it up and we're going to show you how to upload it and build with phone gap. So then get it onto your device and see what it looks like. Now to kick off we do have a couple of prerequisites so we're going to be using Visual Studio Community 2015 and their tools for Cordova plugin extension uh, and you're going to need to know a basic understanding of HTML, CSS and JavaScript and that's it and let's get into it so inside Visual Studio we're going to create a new project uh, in the templates we're going to choose Apache Cordova apps and then the blank app plan template let's give this a quick name of stopwatch and then let's load up our initial template and to start off with we're gonna hit play on the ripple emulator and we're just gonna see what we get right out of the box with this template now once this is loaded we're gonna delete pretty much whatever this template comes with but it's also always nice to see what's there to start with now it's just loading up here and you can see we've got a basic loading page now if we go into our www folder into the index.html file you can see here this app div now that's what we're seeing on the screen already so device is ready here device is ready so this div here, we're going to delete everything. We are also going to go into our CSS file and we're going to select everything and delete. And then we're going to go into our scripts folder and the index.js and we're going to delete everything underneath the to do. Now our template's blank. Uh, it's clean and we can start off with. Now we are going to be using jQuery uh, in this app and I've gone ahead and downloaded the latest minified version and I'm just going to drag and drop that into the scripts folder here and then in the index file just before the index.js I'm going to drag a reference in there now to start off with uh, we are going to create a simple div in our index file now inside here is going to be our content so we're going to start off with another div and let's give this an ID of timer and it's going to be where the actual time is displayed on the stopwatch below that we're going to create a button let's give that an ID of stop start and let's give that just some beginning text let's call it start will do for now so if we hit up that emulator again we should see our timer div and our stop start button and as you can see they're right there uh, if we look at our console I've got no errors just yet so that's perfect to start with now if we go into our index file uh, what we're probably going to start with is just updating the time uh, so when you hit that start button the time increases and we can start to see the app working so let's create a new function and let's just call this update timer now inside here let's create we're gonna have a, a variable called time and we're gonna increase that and then our div the ID of timer we're gonna update that text with the time variable now up at the top here we're going to create this new variable so time and let's give it an initial value of zero now we're going to need to call this update timer when we hit that start button so let's add a click event to the let's get the id right stop start button click function 
Now in here, we're going to want to use a interval timer. So set interval. We're going to call our update timer, and we're going to call it once every millisecond to start with. So let's refresh this page. We're going to hit start, and you can see our time is increasing every millisecond. Now this doesn't really give a true accuracy. The stopwatch is normally done in seconds and milliseconds, not all milliseconds. So if we go to Visual Studio and in our update timer where we set the text, let's do a simple divide by 100. Now if we refresh all of this, you can see this is what we're more used to with the timer. So we've got our seconds and our milliseconds. Currently though, when we go to hit stop, nothing happens. So what we want is another variable. And let's call this is running. And let's set the default to false. And what we want to do is when we hit that button, if we are running, we want to stop. Else, we want to start. This will be stop stopwatch, and this will be start stopwatch. So we already have our call there. Now this set interval does give a unique ID when you call it. So we're going to store that ID inside the new variable, and let's just call this current update ID and what we want to do is set that when we start the watch and to stop it we simply just want to clear interval there we are clear interval and we're going to put that current ID into it what we also want to do is make sure that we set that the running is true and then we want to set the running as false when we stop it. So let's refresh our emulator now. We hit start and we hit stop and it stopped. But currently we don't know it stopped apart from the time stopping but our button isn't changing. So again it's pretty simple to do so once we've started what we can do is update the text of the button to say stop and then when we hit the button again we want the button to say well it's not just start is it it's reset and start so we'll set that so if we refresh again we hit start text changes to stop we hit stop and it goes to reset start we hit restart but the time hasn't reset so if we go back to here, so in our stop, what we're doing, we're clearing the interval. So we're not updating the time anymore. We're setting our is running flag to false. We're updating the text. Then after that, we need to reset our time. So we set that to zero. Let's give this a refresh. We hit start. One, two, three, hit stop. Reset and start. And increasing, we have ourselves a simple stopwatch. Now the style is looking pretty boring right now so let's go ahead and update it. Uh, we're going to start off with let's give the whole thing a background color. So we're going to use the inspector just to test some colors and see what it looks like. So on our body let's give it a background of let's see a dark gray. I like that. We can also see here that the body is given to us with a padding. I'm 
margin and that gets rid of that looks a little better let's set a default color of white we see our time again that already looks a lot better so let's copy the styling we've got here let's go to our index file and then on the body we're going to paste in this we're also going to style our timer and we're also going to style our button again we're going to use the emulator to style it so let's start off with our button and I want to put this button maybe full width I'm going to give it a height of around 100 pixels and I want to put it at the bottom so I'm going to absolutely position it to the bottom like so also I'm not feeling the grey colour so I'm going to give it a background color of maybe like a green to make it a little darker yeah and let's give it a color of white and let's increase that font size as well should make it look a bit easier to read yeah I like that so again let's copy the styling and that's straight into our button and then on the timer itself, let's maybe what do you reckon put it in the middle? Let's increase the font size, can't really see that that well. It's maybe 40 pixels. And for now, let's just give it a basic margin. Let's say margin top of what? Maybe 200 pixels for now. And there we are. Let's copy that to a CSS file, paste it in, there we are, very simple but working stopwatch. That's it for part one, uh, next part we are maybe style it a bit more, maybe we will save the last timer uh, and then change this to a reset button and then a start button and we can maybe save our times below it um, after that we're gonna zip it up and we're gonna put it on phone gap so be sure to keep on watching